Okay, so let's do this. Let's start chapter five. So in your books, a very important chapter uh, on inverses and um, inverses and logarithms. Okay, super important chapter. All right, Ugh, this stuff keeps moving around. Okay, so let's. Um, so we're today we're going to talk about inverses. How can I undo a function? Okay, how can I undo a function? Guess my number. We're going to start with guess my number. Okay, we're going to play a game here, and uh, the winner is whoever guesses this number correctly. All right. So first of all, I have it right on my iPad, so I need to go back. Okay, so write this down. Okay, this is your work for five one. You got to write it down. Uh, let me get my pen. Okay, so write five dash one. Okay, and write down the work that you're gonna do to guess my number. Um, for example, here's, I think this is my first example right here. When I add four to my number and then multiply the sum by 10, so I'm gonna add four to my number and multiply that sum by 10, I get negative 70. What is my number? Okay, so write down your work to show me that you, um, and then please put your answers in the chat. What do you get for your number in the chat, please? So we don't all uh, blurt out the answer. When I add four to my number, and then I multiply that sum by 10, I get negative 70. What is the number? Okay, one person so far. Oh, good job, Randy. Yes, good job, Ethan. Good job, Adam. Good job, Bella. Good job, Elizabeth. Good job, Sophia, Sierra, Mateo, Kailani, uh, Nala, Kyle. Good job, Ari, Grace, Lexi. All right, guys. Good job. You got negative 11. Okay. So did you guys show some work? Did you put like, um, I don't know if I call the number X and I add four to it. And then I take that sum and multiply it by 10, you're gonna get negative 70. So maybe you did the reverse to solve this. So I would like divide by 10. Or maybe you did this in the he your head and you did different and you got uh, negative seven for this part is equal to X plus four. So then you needed to subtract four, however you did it. Uh, if you got negative 11, super. Okay, there are many different ways to think of this and do this. Okay, you guys ready for the next one? That was great. You guys did a great job. So let's put uh, part B here. Here's the second one. Guess my number. Okay, um, I have my number. I'm going to subtract two and multiply by five, and I get 60. So subtract two, multiply, multiply by five, and you get 60. Okay. You put your answers in the chat when you are finished. Two for my number, multiply by five, and I get 60. All right, answers are coming in. Look good so far. So far, everybody's got it right. Good job, people in the chat. You got 14. All right. So, and there's a bunch of you. There's like 12 people who put the answer in the chat. Good job. So if you take your number, you subtract two and you multiply it by five, take that uh, difference and multiply by five, you get 60, so it equals 60. So we work backwards to solve this. So first you would divide by five, divide by five, and you get X minus two equals 60 divided by five is 12. Add two to both sides, X equals 14. So the answer was 14. Okay, so that's one way to do it. If you did it other ways, awesome. But what you guys just did is you found the inverse of a function, okay? So you all who gave me answers in the chat successfully found the inverse. Okay, so you're off to a great start in chapter five because so you kind of understand the concept of inverse. All right, so I need to go to the next problem. So that was number one, the guessing game. 
Here's number two. Sorry, what happened to my pen? Got to get that back. Um, a picture of Anita's function machine is shown at the right. Here's Anita's function machine. When she puts in three, a negative, um, wait. When she puts in three, a seven comes out. When she puts in four, nine comes out. When she puts in negative three, negative five comes out. So we don't know what the function is, right? But guess what? We're going to have to figure it out. But we know like three inputs and three outputs. Make a table to organize the inputs and outputs from Anita's function machine. Explain in words what this machine is doing to input to the input to generate the output. Okay, so we wanna make a table. So let's make a XY table. And um, I'm gonna start with the lowest number, negative three and negative five. And um, then is three, seven. And I'm gonna put a lot of space down here. I'm gonna put three, seven. And then our next output is four, nine. And then four comes after three. So I'm gonna put it right below the three, four, nine. So we know three inputs. Why did I leave all this space? So that we could fill in the numbers in between negative three and four, like negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, right? So there's a whole bunch of numbers that we don't know, but we do know three. So should we be able to figure out an equation? Yeah, right? There's several ways we could do this. Hmm. Uh, yeah, there's definitely a few different ways to do this. So we're assuming it's linear. One way we could do it is we could find the slope in between these two points here, right? Remember the slope equation, guys? Uh, yeah, m equals, anybody know the slope equation? Not unmute themselves. Oh, somebody put it in the chat. Let me check the chat. Rise over run. Right. So how do we calculate the rise over run? Y2 minus Y1 equals, well, sorry, divided by X2 minus X1. Right. Y2 minus Y1 over divide by X2 minus X1, right? Good. That's the slope. And I think somebody in the chat put how much it's changing. So for the slope, we subtract these two, right? Nine minus seven over four minus three. So it's changing this. Remember, this is my delta Y over my delta X. That's your rise over run, which you just said, the rise over run. So nine minus seven gives me two. And the run is one. So it goes, that means it goes up two over one every time, right? Up two over one. So that is our slope. Our slope is two. Well, our equation, our slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. We just found the slope m, right? The number in front of the x. So we just need to find what b is. So isn't also, isn't B our um, zero term here? Okay, so don't I have a bunch of X and Y's? So can I plug in an X and a Y and the M and then just solve for B, right? This is one way to do it. We could just, you know, say, hey, the numbers might be going down by two and subtract two and see if that works. So um, let's plug in an X and a Y. Let's plug in, um, I don't know. Let's just plug in the three and the seven. Okay, so starting with y, seven equals the slope two times our x three plus b, right? Seven is your y, two times three. So this is six, so seven equals six plus b. I'm gonna minus six from both sides and I'm gonna get b equals one. Okay, so that means this, our b is when x equals zero. Um, that's our b value. So. It's, so it's one. Let's see if these, do these go down by two over 10? Well, let's see what the equation is. So if I plug it back into y equals mx plus b. Okay, y is gonna be y, any y value. m is two, x is any x value, and our b is one. So this is our equation, right? If it's two x, it means the numbers are going up by two every time. So if I go reverse and go backwards, nine, seven, five, three, one, negative one, negative three, negative five. Voila, we've finished the table.
to say, and it works, right? So that's kind of like a double check. Oh, this is a definitely our equation. Okay, so our input is X, our output is Y. Input X, output Y. All right, part B, Anita's function machine suddenly start, starts working backwards. It begins pulling out outputs back up into the machine, reversing the machine's process and returning the original input. If seven is pulled back into this machine, what value do you think will come out of the top? Hmm, if so, it kind of shows you right here, right? If seven is pulled out of the machine, up into the machine, then shouldn't we get three? And can't we look at the table right here? If we have an output of seven, then our input is three. So for part B, let me um, erase some of this. I need to erase all this, guys. Sorry, I need more room. So that's what we're going to put right down for part B. You can go ahead and write that down while I'm erasing all this. All this lovely work. Here's my pen. Okay, B. So if the output is seven, if y equals seven, then x is going to equal three. We know that from the table and from this picture right here. Can we find any input if they give us any output? Hmm. Anita sets up her, her new backwards function machine and enters other outputs. What would you expect to come up out of the top if nine is entered? So if we put nine in the back here, what is gonna come out of the top guys? Can you put in the chat? Good, getting answers in the chat. Ooh, seven, three, four, five, six, seven. It went up to seven answers. Uh, good, people said four. Good, and did you just look at the table to see that, right? So when y equals nine, x equals four. And we could just look at the table right here. When our output is nine, our input had to be four, okay? All right, okay, part D. Record the inputs and outputs of the backwards function machine in a table. So we did that right here. Record the numbers being pulled back in as X and the numbers coming out at the top as Y. So, okay, so they want us basically to reverse these. Okay, so for D, I need more space. I'm gonna do it over here. On your paper, you could do it right where it belongs. So since our machine is working backwards, we basically want to put, um, we're gonna put the Y's over here and the X's over here, but we're gonna call them X and Y. So we're reversing everything, right? So I'm gonna take this table and I'm gonna reverse it. So it's gonna be negative five, negative three, negative one, positive one, three, five, seven, nine. The numbers, the inputs are now going up by two. The outputs are gonna be going up by one because that's, so we're doing the X values over here. Negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, so we swapped the X's and the Y's. If we're pulling the numbers from the output up through the input, this is our new input and output. We're switching the X's and the Y's, right? So if I input negative five, I'm gonna, output negative three. If negative five comes out here, I'm gonna get negative three over here. If I input one, if I input one down here, then zero is gonna come out of the top. And that's what this function tells me, okay? Uh, we don't find the function for this yet, but we'll do that next. Okay, that's kind of the idea of what an inverse is. We're still gonna do some more here. I gotta clear this out, go to the next slide. Uh, number three. The function machine at the right uses the function f of x equals 5x plus 2. If the crank is turned backwards, what number should be pulled up into the machine to have a 4 come out of the top? OK. OK, so let's write down our function first. And this is 5-3, so you want to write 5-3 on your paper, uh, a. The function is f of x equals 5x plus 2. Well, if we want 4 to come out of the top, is that our input or our output? 
four is our input, right? So we can find what needs to come out of the bottom of the machine by plugging four into the function. F of four is five times four plus two. So we have 20 plus two, so it should be 22. So if we have a machine, you know, if we have a machine, we should plug in 22 to the bottom of the machine to get four to come out of the top. This is our output, this is our input, unless we reverse it for our inverse, we'd input 22 and get four for our output. Okay, that's what the inverse is. It's the machine working backwards. Thus the term inverse, inverse means backwards. Okay, um, that's part A. Part B, Keiko wants to build a new machine that will undo what f of x does to an input. What must Keiko's machine do to 17 to do to 17 to undo f of x and return a value of three? So we want to put 17 in and get three out, right? So basically, we need to know what this function is. Hmm, what do we need to do? Um, we need to take this number, right, 22, or y. Let's call it our y value. And don't we need to like minus two because we end up adding two and then dividing by five instead of multiplying by five we're going to divide by five right so if i input my value i'm putting y for my uh output 17 so if i put 17 in here 17 minus 2 over 5 17 minus 2 is 15 over 5 which is 3 so the input needs to be 3 Right, let's double check that. Let's do f of three. f of three is equal to five times three plus two, ah, 17. So yeah, I need to, so this is our inverse function right here, right? This is the inverse function. This is what we call the inverse function. How did I come up with that inverse function? It's a secret, but I'm gonna, I might tell you the secret. All right, I might tell it to you because I feel like you guys are paying attention and I might tell you the secret right now in just a second. Okay, so we had to undo the two and we had to undo the five, right? To get this inverse function. Okay, to undo a function is called the inverse function and has a notation of, so this is C, F negative one X. We never say negative one X, okay? This, we, we say F inverse X. This notation means the inverse of a function because a function is regularly F of X, right? That's just any function. But when you get this negative one, that means it's the inverse. These two functions are inverses of one another. This is not a negative one power, okay? Note the negative one is not an exponent. It is just a notation saying that it's the inverse of this. Okay, this is not an exponent, not an exponent. So that's why we never say f negative one of x. We say f inverse x when you read this exponent, not an exponent. Okay, it looks like an exponent, but it's not a negative one exponent. It just means that this is the opposite, the opposite of this, the inverse of that. Okay, so that's what that notation means. So write Keiko's undo function as with this function. So remember, f of x, usually that's our y value, right? So, in, and we would need to, her inverse function is gonna, the x and y's are gonna reverse. So this would normally be y equals x, sorry, that's an x, erase, x minus two over five. This is her inverse function right here, right? Um, but instead of using y, we are going to use f inverse x. So instead of y, we write f negative 1x like that. We call that f inverse x equals x minus 2 over 5. That is how you write the inverse function. Okay. So remember, this is just like a y. It's like y equals x minus two over five. That f inverse is just a fancy way of writing y, but this just tells us that it's the opposite of this, of this function right here, opposite of that function right there, okay? This function is the opposite of that function. This will undo, when you put the outputs in here, you'll get the inputs 
of this function. Okay. All right. So I still didn't tell you the secret yet, but we're going to get to that. Let me clear these drawings out. Um, I need to move this up. I was intending to move this up here. Now look at C and D. We don't need that anymore. So this is still number three. Let's see, get my pen back. An undo function is called an inverse function and has notation um, f negative x. Okay, we did that, right? Wait, write an equation. So that was C where we wrote the equation. Okay, we did that. D, choose a value for x. What strategy can you use to show that your equation f inverse of x undoes the effects? Um, so let's choose f of four, which I think we already did that, but, and what was my function? My original function was um, five x plus two. That's right there. So if I plug in four into this, I get five times four plus two, which is 22. So we know we got 22, the output. So the inverse function, f inverse of x, which I just erased, was um, x minus two divided by five, right? So if I plug in this output into here, f of 20 to f inverse of uh, 22, Okay, I'll get 22 minus two over five, right? So I'm plugging 22 into this function right here and right here too. So 22 minus two is 20 divided by five. I get four, which was the input, right? So we tested our machine. When we plugged in 22 into the inverse function, we did get the input that we put into the input function. That makes sense, right? So this is the inverse function. This is the original function. All right, what strategy can we use? So we can plug in the original function, then plug in the output into the inverse function to get the input that we put into the original function. Sorry, that's a little confusing, but hopefully you understood that. All right, I need to go on to number four here. I need to clean, clear the screen and go on to number four. There's a couple more problems, we're almost done. Uh, and Okay, Keiko is working with a new function, g of x. So going from f of x to g of x, she writes down the following steps for g of x. Uh, we want to add five. So g of x is going to be, this is number four, um, add five. So we're going to take our number. We're going to add five first. We're going to divide by two. Divide by two. Pen isn't writing. Divide by two. Cube it. Well, if you cube it, you have to cube the whole thing. And multiply by six. Oh, multiply by six. So we have to write the six out in front. We want to multiply all this by six. That is how you would write four functions put together. Okay. We want to add five to our number, divide by two, cube it, and then multiply by six. So notice I put the parentheses in there. Okay. What is the equation for g of x? Well, we just wrote it down right there. A is six times x plus five divided by two cubed. Okay, what is the output when the input is three? So let's do g of three would be six times uh, three plus five, let's just say eight, right? Three plus five right there is eight divided by two cubed. Order of operations, we do what's inside the parentheses first. So six times four cubed, Four cubed is 64, so six times 64, what is that? My calculator around here. Oh, I think I fit in my um, iPad, which I just shut. Let's see, 384. Okay, 384. Did this last night. I don't remember what I got, but I got, apparently I got 384 last night, so good. 384. Okay, so we input three, we get 384. So if we did the inverse, if we found the inverse of this function and we plugged in 384, we should get three for our output, okay? So let's see, do they want us to do that next? I believe so. Let me move this part up. So hope this doesn't confuse anybody. I'm moving this up. Help Kip will write down the steps in words for the inverse machine in words and then write its equation, okay. So B, in words. So if we want to do the opposite, don't we, I kind of covered what I wanted to do. Let's see, don't we need to do the reverse of 
all all this. So shouldn't we divide by six, right? So get my pen back. You know what? I want to type this. We're going to. That wasn't a good dot idea. It's not letting me type. Why won't you let me type? Divide by six first, right? So do the opposite of this. Divide by six, cube it. What's the opposite of cubing it? Take the cube root. Then the opposite of dividing by two, multiply by two. Multiply by two. And then lastly, opposite of adding five, is subtract five. Okay, so we want to divide by six, take the cube root, multiply by two, subtract five. Okay, so we need to write that out. Okay, here's the secret part. Let's see. Here's the secret part. Uh, no, you do not need your cameras on right now. Okay, so. Um, so here's the secret. How can I do all this without like having to do it in my head? Okay, and write all this out. This is the secret. If I wanna find the inverse of this function, so this is my Y, this is my X, right? I get my pen back. This is actually Y and this is X. Well, we're gonna switch the X and the Y. To do the inverse, you switch the X and the Y. So this Y now is gonna become my X, X equals and then six times y plus five over two cubed. This is the inverse, right? When you switch the x and the y, super important, switch the x and y, you have the inverse. The problem is you can't leave it like this. You want to get it into y equals form. form. So we have to solve it for y. We have to get y by itself. We have to get all, rid of all these numbers, which is basically do all these steps right here, right? So the first step we should do is divide by six, like it said. So if I uh, divide by six, divide by six, right? To get rid of that, then I'm gonna have, um, do it up here, x over six equals y plus five over two cubed. Okay, next, what do I need to get rid of? Well, next, you should get rid of the cube. So you should take the cube root, take the cube root of x over six. Okay, so that's gonna get rid of that. So I just get y plus five over two equals the cube root of x over six. Now you need to get rid of the two, right? So we need to multiply by two. And we need to multiply this thing by two. So a lot of algebra skills here. Y plus five is equal to two times the cube root of X over six. Okay, lastly, we want to minus five from both sides. So minus five. So Y is gonna equal two times the cube root of x over six minus five. So that is our inverse function. Did we do this? Did we divide by six, take the cube root, multiply by two and subtract five, right? We did all this backwards. So that is your inverse function. Help Kate go write down the steps in words and then we wrote the equation. This is my g inverse of x too. The y, I can change to g inverse of x, right? Um, verify that your equation in part b correctly undoes the output of part a. So we put in, did we put in a number? No, we didn't put in a number. So they, you should always test out your function. So let's input a number into here. Uh, it'll have a lot of room. Let me erase this part right here, so I have more room to write. Oh, we got 384. We put um, we put in three and we got 384, right? So that's our input, awesome. So let's input into G inverse of X, right? G inverse of X, I'm gonna input 
384 here. I should have wrote 384. G inverse of 384 is going to be, I'm going to put 384 in here, 2 times the cube root of 384 divided by 6 minus 5. Okay, and we should get 3 back. So if we do 384 divided by 6. I didn't do this ahead of time. I forgot to do this part. This goes in 6 times, 36, 24, 4, 64 times. So I want the cube root of 64, which is 4. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. Then I'm going to multiply that by 2 and subtract 5. 8 minus 5 equals, yay, 3. So when we did g of 384, 3 g inverse of 384, we got 3. So we confirmed, hey, when we put 384 into our inverse, we did get the input that we did last time. So we tested our function. So that is how I know this function is correct. Uh, this, where is that function? Uh, this function right here is correct. That is the inverse of g of x, right? So that's how you test your function. You always want to test your function. All right, guys, that's number four. I need to clear this out and go on to number five. Okay, what are the inverses for the functions below? Use function notation. Justify that each equation for the inverse works. Okay, so this is number five, okay. Wow, that's something you to send me in an email. All right, um, for number five, uh, I wanna find the inverse of this. So um, five dash five A. So this is my function, Let's put y equals three X minus six. That's my original F of X function, right? To find the inverse, what do you do first guys? Very important step, I told you the secret, you switch the X and the Y. So you put the X here in place of Y, three Y minus six. You switch the X and the Y and then you solve for Y. Okay, so that's how you find the inverse. You switch X and Y and then solve for Y. Okay, so let's add six to both sides. Okay, and X plus six equals three Y and then divide by three, divide by three. So this is our function, our inverse function, which this is gonna be y, I'm gonna put f inverse of x instead of y, right? Equals x plus six divided by three. This is our inverse function. So can you see how x plus six divided by three is the opposite of three x minus six? Okay. So f inverse of x, x plus six divided by three is the opposite of three x minus six because you're gonna add six and divide by three. All right, part B. B, g of x is equal to x cubed minus five. This is our y value. Well, to find the inverse, we switch the x and the y. So x equals y cubed minus five. And now we solve for y, two steps. Get rid of the five first, add five, add five. Y cubed equals X plus five. Then we need to get rid of the cubed. So to get rid of the cubed, we take the cube root. So notice we are doing cube roots now. Okay, so um, Y or this is what G of X. So I'm gonna put G inverse of X instead of Y because this would just be Y equals the cube root of x plus five. So that is my inverse function. So it makes sense, right? That the inverse of a cube is the cube root. It's gonna have a cube root in it, right? The original function had an x cubed. So your inverse is gonna have a cube root because those are inverses of one another. Okay, C. Um, P of x, equals two times X plus three cubed. Okay. Um, okay, so this is our Y right here, and this is our X. So we wanna switch the two first. So X equals two times Y plus three cubed. Okay, now we wanna solve for Y. What do you undo first? 
we should undo what's outside the parentheses first because we're working backwards. So we're going to undo this two first. So you have x over two equals y plus three cubed. So what do we undo next? Well, we need to undo that cube. So we take the cube root, cube root of this. Okay, we get y plus three equals the cube root of x over two. Can I go ahead and minus the three like this and just put minus three? So we get y equals the cube root of x over two minus three. And notice the minus three is outside this cube root, right? It's not part of the cube root. Do not make it part of the cube root. Okay, and since this was a um, p of x function, I'm gonna change this notation to p inverse of x instead of y. That tells me it's the inverse and not the original function cube root of x plus over two minus three. So use inverse notation, okay? Use this notation with the negative one. That tells me, hey, this is an inverse function. If you just leave it y, I don't know if that's the original function or the inverse function if you leave it y, but this tells me, hey, this is an inverse of the original function. Okay, um, I need to erase this part to make room for D. D, 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 D. Pen back, change to blue. D says T of X. So D, T of X, which I'll just make Y, is equal to 10 times X minus four over three. All right, this is just a simple um, linear equation. It's a line and we want to solve it for, oh, I forgot to reverse them, huh? Well, I'll reverse them now. So if I want to do the inverse, I change the X and the Y, X equals 10 times Y minus four over three. This is the inverse. Now I got to solve for Y. So first we want to undo that three there by uh, multiplying by three, multiplying by three, boom, boom we get three X equals 10 times Y minus four. Then we wanna undo the 10. So you divide by 10, divide by 10. So I get three tenths X basically equals Y minus four. And then we want to add four to both sides, add four. So we get, instead of Y, I'm gonna make it, uh, what is it? T prime of x or t negative one of x is equal to, I don't have a lot of room here, three x over 10 plus four. Okay, so this is the inverse of that, of this, okay? 10 thirds times x minus four, the reverse is three tenths x plus four. Okay, um, so we did four examples of how to find the inverse, right? The key is you switch the X and the Y and you solve for Y every time. If somebody didn't watch this video, you would have no idea how to do this. So I'm glad I taught you something important there. Um, for number six, the last problem that we're doing it says to choose one function and its inverse from the previous problem, make sure each team member has a different function, then make a complete graph and table for your function and its inverse. So I'm gonna let you guys do that because there's four of them. I'm gonna assign you one of these problems. Um, so you're gonna make a graph, right? And so you, let's say you get G of X and G inverse of X. So you have to like, uh, one of them is a cube, right? Like if I do a cubed, it's gonna be like this. If I do its inverse, graph the inverse. If you don't know how to graph it, uh, make an XY table, okay? So make an XY table, choose like five values, like negative three, negative one, zero, one, three, something like that. Spread them out a little bit, okay? And plug them in. And then to do get the inverse, you're going to reverse them, right? Put your Y over here, your X over here. So you get negative three, negative one, zero, one, three. And then whatever values you get over here, you put it over here and then graph them on the same graph. 
Okay, so these are the ones I'm assigning to you. I already, I pre-picked who gets what. So if your first name, we're going by first name, not last name, okay? If your first name starts with an A, we have a lot of A's in this class. We have like 10 people, 10 people whose names start with an A. If your first name starts with an A, you get to do uh, the second one, which was B, right? You get to do letter B, okay? If your first name starts with, with a D through F, we have like five or six of you, uh, then you get to do C. If your first name begins with the G through M, you get to do the last one, D. And for the last half of the alphabet, if your first name begins with N and we have Yael who begins with Y, there are five people, you get to do A. Okay, so that's the one I'm assigning to you. I'm going to look for it on your classwork. If you don't have it, I'm definitely taking off points. So you definitely want to do this. Okay, before you submit it, uh, we have, we still have 40 minutes left in class. So it should not take you 40 minutes to do this one problem. It should take you like maybe 10, 15 minutes, like 10 minutes, okay, to make the graph of both of your functions. So um, you are doing either A, D, C, or B. Hopefully you've written down which one you are doing. And I'm gonna go back to that screen. So you're doing, you're graphing either A, B, C, or D, whichever one I've assigned you right here. Okay, you're graphing both of them. So you're graphing the inverse as well. So like the inverse, I don't know, let's say the inverse goes like that. It doesn't go like that, but you're doing two graphs, the, the original function and its inverse on the graph and seeing the relationship. Okay, then go back and answer the question for number six here. And uh, I have one more announcement to make, but let me pause the video before I make this announcement. Um, please don't go yet.